Welcome back to another quarantine production. Today we're gonna be having a little bit of a talk, okay? Because there's some things about cars that I've been trying to learn for like a while now, and no matter who I ask, I can't seem to get a consistent and accurate or trustworthy opinion on, okay? So if you're like me, and you too wanna to make your car go faster, spit flames out the tailpipe, and piss off every single soccer mom in your neighborhood, then stay tuned because today's video is all about tuning. See what I did there? Okay, so some of you guys have been asking me when I'm gonna install some power mods on my car. Now I have tons of plans for increasing the horsepower on my car, but I wanna do it properly. And the harsh reality of it is that you could install all the power mods you want, but without updating the tune on the vehicle, they can't really do anything for you. Or can they? A little over a year ago, Engineering Explained made a video comparing factory air filters to aftermarket options. In this video, he found that upgrading to an aftermarket air filter can increase your car's horsepower by about four to five powerful ponies. I'll leave a link to that video down in the description so you can go and check that out for yourselves if you so choose. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. So, if an aftermarket air filter boosts power a little bit, then shouldn't a cold air intake system boost power a lot? Hey, that is a great question, other me. The thing about running aftermarket air filters is that you don't really change much about how the engine actually functions, you just kind of upgraded to a better filter. This same concept applies to aftermarket cold air intakes as well as upgraded exhaust. By installing these mods, you're essentially just giving your car the potential to make more horsepower, but without updating the tune, nothing drastic is going to happen. It's kind of like going to work dressed up nicely, expecting your boss to give you a raise. This obviously wouldn't work because even though you look more professional, nothing about your behavior has actually changed enough for you to earn more money. And the boss knows that underneath that outfit, you're still just a punk that wants to blow more money on car parts anyway. Here's another analogy. Imagine that this hourglass is your engine. The top of the hourglass represents your cold air intake and the bottom of the hourglass represents your exhaust. Now imagine that the flow of sand from top to bottom represents how much horsepower your engine can produce. Increasing the size of the intake and exhaust sides of the hourglass won't affect much because the bottleneck's diameter hasn't changed. The bottleneck in the center can represent the car's tune. Increasing the diameter of this metaphorical bottleneck is essentially what happens when you update your car's tune. Obviously there are way more variables, but I hope that you get the gist of what I'm saying. Okay, so that's cool and all, but how do I actually update the tune to make it synergize with my aftermarket parts? Hey! I'm certainly glad you asked. The most top of the line, amazing way to tune your car is to take it to a shop that specializes in tuning. What they do is they put your car on a dynamometer, which is essentially just a massive treadmill for your car. Then they hook up your car to their computers and do a bunch of reprogramming wizardry to make your car function with all those eBay and OfferUp mods that you shove down your bone stock car's throat. Cheapskates. Unfortunately, dyno tuning is kind of expensive and it's not really something you utilize until your car is pretty close to its final form and you don't have any more like big power mods that you plan on doing in the future. Either that or you're just dirty stinking rich and you dyno tune for every little bell and whistle you come across. Okay, but there has to be a cheaper way to do it. Well, if you're a broke college kid like me, then you're in luck because there are other options. The alternative to dyno tuning is just regular old email tuning or flash tuning or whatever you want to call it. This is one of those things that you can only refer to by a slang name because nobody actually knows what it's called. Depending on what type of car you drive, you should be able to find a brand online that can send you update tunes for pretty much all of your modifying needs. If you pick Subaru, you're probably gonna go with Cobb. Rhymes with knob, should be easy enough for you knobs to remember. But if you're like me, and you drive an all-American, crowd-annihilating, destiny-manifesting machine, then you'll probably just pick up one of these Bama tuners. So I'm gonna be going over the gist of the Bama tuning route, but just keep in mind that most of the transactions will go something like this. So first off, you go to the Aftermarket Parts website. Next, you watch an informative video made by the one and only JustinWithAmericanMuscle.com. I'm JustinWithAmericanMuscle.com. He literally couldn't be a more perfect icon in the car community. It's like Johnny Sins and Paul Walker had an amazing baby that loved to do burnouts. Anyways, you'll buy the tuner, and shortly after you'll receive an email giving you instructions on how to request the tune. Eventually, you'll reach a page or sheet where they ask you what mods have been done to the vehicle and what sort of fuel you intend to run your car off of. It's super imperative that you're honest at this section because if you tell them that 
your car is straight pipe but you're running catalytic converters, the tune is just not going to work with your car. So stop lying like you would at a car meet and be straight up. After all is said and done, you'll click submit or save or send or whatever. And then after a few business days, they'll email you an updated tune file. Usually within that email, they'll provide you with instructions on how to upload the tune from your computer to the tuner that you bought using your entire last paycheck from Chuck E. Cheese's. Where a kid can be a kid. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that little like spiel that I put together as much as I enjoyed making it. Today, I'm just gonna upload the tune and kind of show you guys the process of getting the tune onto the car. So before we put the tune on, I'm just gonna go around uh, the block. And that's just so that I can I can remember what it feels like to drive it stock because this car is about to be way different. I've also invited my dad to come with me so that he can kind of be my butt dyno comparison because I cannot afford to put this car on a dyno and get horsepower numbers. But if you guys do want to see some numbers, I can link some videos down in the description. So uh, definitely look for that if you're interested. All right, so this is my dad. He's gonna be our, our dynamometer. And we're just gonna, this is just our baseline test so that we can kind of maybe see if we can feel a difference. One thing I am looking forward to with the tune is mostly going to be throttle response. With the car basically being stock, it's not going to gain that much horsepower, but the throttle response with the play-by-wire system in these cars improves a lot with an aftermarket tune. All right, you ready? Time you. I guess. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just kidding. not like super fast but just the noise that you get from like the like the stock intake makes tons of sound and the exhaust like it just feels awesome to drive it's quick know. it is quick it's definitely not a slow car no no but it needs to be fast dude. <laughs> i think you really notice it at the top end um when i drove a boosted one uh, a couple weeks ago i noticed that like up to about 2000 to 2500 rpm it feels pretty much the same but where the supercharger adds like that whole like like power band it basically doubles or triples it in the top end whereas like with the stock stuff like it kind of it's really good low end torque especially for because it's a v8 but um once you get past about 3000 rpm it kind of just falls off even like with just the stock stuff the tune will help open it a little bit but once i get like the cold air intake and the full exhaust system set up that's when you really notice it like this is 3000 rpm right now and you can kind of tell like it feels like the car wants to pull more but it just is limited by the stock there you go and it being the three valve mustang like it's certainly not going to pull like the 5.0 does but it just makes up for it with style like it just sounds like the most awesome muscle car ever it's like super it iconic good. It just has the the rumble is on point in this car for sure i haven't ridden in it since you got home really yeah it's running good make some kind of awesome noises grumble grumble pop yeah. grumble grumble pop pop crackle <laughs> crackle pop all right so we finally reached the point where we're gonna go ahead and upload the tune onto the car and there's no going back now i mean i could upload the stock tune but i don't want to go back <laughs> So the tuner would have come with one of these little OBD2 adapters. So basically you're gonna plug this into the OBD2 port under your dash, and then we'll follow the prompts on the screen. So now we're gonna plug this into the tuner. Oh, I'm gonna need to turn the key on too. There we go. So we're gonna go ahead and click program vehicle, and it'll say it's not legal in California. I'm gonna turn the key on. Press continue. So now it's gonna show the available tunes and I'm gonna click on 87 because I don't have 91 in the gas tank right now. And that's really important because most tuning companies will send you more than one, but it depends heavily on the type of fuel that you're running in the car because if you have less than 91, you don't wanna be using the 91 tune. So I'm just gonna go for 87 performance, which is just gonna be your standard performance tune. So now it's just gonna show you all the different things that it it's gonna update, a bunch of things that I don't, really want to mess with so I'm just gonna click approve I'm just gonna click confirm now it's gonna say to turn the key off 
and then back on. So it's gonna save the stock data. And while this is happening, you will notice that some of the lights are gonna be coming on and off on the dashboard. That's normal. It's just kind of running the ECU through some programming things and just kind of resetting things so that it's ready to upload the new data. At this point, it's just going to go ahead and clear all the codes that may have popped up during the tuning process. Again, that's completely normal. Oh, and as you can see, now it says turn the key off, turn key on, download complete. Alrighty, so the tune should be done. Now we're going to hop in and take it for the first drive. So we just got the tune installed. Now I'm going to go ahead and fire it up for the first time. I'm a little bit nervous, but the car is practically stock, so it should be fine. Famous last words. <laughs> Should be fine. Now you got me nervous. <laughs> so good. Every, everything's far. Er, what am I saying? Trying to say. So far, so good. <laughs> everything's far. I noticed that the pedal is a little bit more immediate, which is what I was hoping for. So the S197 Mustangs came with play-by-wire setups instead of instead of play by cable. So that means that instead of the throttle actually, like when you push the gas, instead of it actually pulling a metal cable to open the throttle body, what it does is it sends a little signal through an electric harness to the throttle body to tell it to open. And from factory, it takes the average of where the pedal is located to like signify where it needs to be so that way it's a little more smooth but obviously if you want a performance vehicle you want your throttle to be immediate so that when you're downshifting and going around corners and stuff it's right where you need it to be so it increases your throttle response by decreasing the delay basically yeah cool. yeah it's kind of hard to explain but it almost feels like the gas pedal is a little bit more firm which obviously it's not any more stiff or firm but it's because it, the car is actually pulling sooner to when I hit the pedal as opposed to um, to taking an average of where the pedal is located. Well, I don't have the pedal, but it feels a little more solid. Like, yeah. I, I don't know how to describe it. But, uh. Yeah, it is kind of... It's hard to explain, especially with the car being stock and then updating the tune. The, the differences are going to be subtle and more noticeable to the driver, but it is a good thing to do, especially if you plan on doing more mods in the future. Getting the car used to being tuned and running slightly differently is a good first step into getting the car like straight piped or installing a cold air intake. It'll make sure that your car remains reliable over a longer period of time. <laughs> Do you hear that? Oh yeah. Heck yeah, it's way quicker. Yeah. Just a little bit quicker off the line. Feels like it's opened up the power band a little bit more, which is awesome. That's exactly what I was hoping for. It's just a little bit lighter on its feet, a little bit more nimble. This is kind of how I think a lot of people hope that the car actually came from the factory as opposed to having to buy a $400 tuner just to make it feel like this. Yeah, it's got some jump. Yeah, I know. It's, it's going for sure. It really feels like that second gear pull is more mean. Yeah, especially right at about what we were talking about earlier, right at about 2,500 to 3,000 RPM. It just feels like it, like it obviously isn't extremely like way faster, but it's definitely a lot more responsive in, in that mid range RPM. And of course, after you tune a car, it's really important to drive it for a little bit because most modern cars have what's called an adaptive ECU, which basically means that the car takes a little bit of time to adjust to like how the computer is telling it to perform and vice versa. It's like checks and balances in the government. Except it works. Yeah, except it works. <laughs> <laughs> and you notice it kind of lurching a little bit. That's the throttle being like super precise as to where my foot is because obviously I'm a human and as I'm experiencing the car pull, I'm not able to keep it perfectly stable. Yeah, that's you're what getting you used want. to it too. Yeah. You're getting used to it and it's it's learning its new curve too. Right. 
sleeping on me yeah the little the little cracks and popples 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 pops and crackles cracks and popples <laughs> <laughs> along with what I was saying about the hourglass analogy increasing either end of the hourglass isn't going to change much if the bottleneck diameter doesn't change but that's also goes vice versa for if you increase the bottleneck it's limited to how big the other sides of the hourglass are. So I think that analogy is really good at understanding how tuning works. Like obviously increasing the diameter of the bottleneck is gonna help. So getting it tuned is gonna help the car perform a little bit better, but you also need those mods. If you really want the car to achieve its max potential, it, you need both. It takes two to tango. <laughs> that sounds gnarly. <laughs> RPM of the engine actually helps stabilize the uh, stabilize the car on the road because it's kind of like a, a gyroscope in a sense. Oh, you mean the actual yeah, actually, increased yeah. RPM of, yeah. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it's a little bit different than my usual style of just doing the vlog type stuff, but I honestly thought that the Anchorman type uh, video was a lot of fun. So if you guys want to see more content like this, definitely just let me know down in the comments. I also have a cool mod coming up next, which I'm super excited to showcase for you guys. And as usual, I like to reward the people that stay all the way to the end of the video. So uh, I guess here's the, um, the hint. All right, that's all you get. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below about what you're excited to see next, and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out, dream big.